Welcome to Epiphany Church. My name is Pastor Derek Parks, and I am just thrilled to be with you today. I'm the lead pastor here at Epiphany, and it is my joy and privilege to serve you in this way through the preaching of the Word of God. And so we're just excited about what Jesus is doing here. And so we're jumping in. We're in this series. It's the conclusion of our series called Prove It. And so we want to welcome everybody watching online today, and that's all of you because we're not gathering and so we're meeting in this new way now uh, because of the events that are happening in our world. And we want to be very sensitive to the needs of our community and to the needs of the people who are in our sphere. And so we're excited. The church is still going. The church is still moving. A pandemic does not stop the church of God. The church of God is the most powerful force in the world. And so we're excited about all that God is doing. We're in this series called Prove It, and we've been walking through the book of 1 John, and we're at the end of that now. And so we're going to be reading through 1 John chapter 4, verse 16 through 20 today. And I've got a message that I'm titling as Proven Love. So join me as we read from 1 John chapter 4. It says this, it says, And we have come to know and to believe the love God has for us. He says that God is love, and the one who remains in love remains in God, and God remains in him. In this, love is made complete with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment, because he is, so also are we in this world. Verse 18 says this, he says, there is no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives out fear, because fear involves punishment. So the one who fears is not complete in love. Verse 19, he tells us this. Watch this. He says, we love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, and yet he hates his brother, guess what he is? He says, he's a liar. For the person who does not love his brother or sister whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. Verse 21, he says, and we have this command from the Lord. The one who loves God must love his brother and sister. Pray with me. Father, we thank you for your word today. Father, I pray, God, that as this word goes forward, God, as it is trans meant it through the interwebs and it goes across uh, the internet, God. I pray, Lord, that your people would be impacted by your word, God, that your people might be contacted by your spirit, God, as I speak today. And so, Father, I pray, God, that they would meet the eternal Father of heaven, the Savior of the world, God, through this message today. And so, Lord, we're praying that, God. We're asking, God, that you would save somebody today, God. We uh, don't doubt God, that you're able to save people even through this medium. And so, God, we worship today, God. We are thankful, God, for what you've done, and we're thankful for all that you're doing. And so, Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. As, as we're surrounded by the chaos of the coronavirus epidemic, many of us have been stripped of the amenities that we're so used to. Travel, work, gatherings, all those things have been stripped from us in one way or another. However, one thing that I've been learning throughout this time is that your identity must be connected to Jesus and nothing else. John has told us countless times in this book that the way to prove our love for Jesus is to love our brothers and sisters. So I want to submit this idea to you today that if you are going to prove it, then you must have love. If you are going to prove it, then you must have love. If you're going to have love, you need to understand this about love. Love is enduring. John tells us here in verse 16, he says, he says, and we have come to know and to believe the love 
that God has for us. If you're going to endure in love, then you have to rely on what you know and believe. This word used for know here in this passage has the sense of learning to know. In in the midst of difficulty, in the midst of crisis, you have to know what you know. See, knowing what you know means that you are eagerly and equally prepared for whatever crisis might come up in your life. See, knowing what you know means that you lean in on the knowledge of Jesus that you already possess. See, you've got to know that you can trust God in the midst of COVID-19 simply because he brought you all the way through 2019. See, not only that, but you can trust God God in the midst of isolation and quarantine because you know this truth and you know this reality that you're never truly alone. Why? Because the word of God says that he will never leave us or forsake us. See, you can make it through simply based on what you have learned about Jesus through your experience with him. See, David tells us this very clearly In Psalm chapter 37, verse 25, he says, I was young, but now I'm old, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging for bread. See, David gives us some clear words there about his relationship with God. He gives us some clear words about his experience with the Father, knowing that all throughout his life, as a young man and now as an old man, David is proclaiming that he's never seen the people of God be forsaken. And David been, had gone through so much adversity, he went through so many trials in his life, so much difficulty, and he still was able to proclaim that he has never seen the righteous forsaken. We're called to live in the midst of crisis based on what we know about Christ already. See, you have to understand this, is that we're called to living in this manner But not only that, John presents this question to us. He asks us, do we believe in what we know? See, oftentimes we know stuff, but we don't believe it. Oftentimes we know things, we have a knowledge of those things, but we don't always believe it. I want to get us to understand this very clearly here. To believe, in this sense, it means to be committed to an idea. I'm going to ask this question to you. Are you committed to Jesus based on what you know about him? Uh, And I'll I'll say it a little bit better for us in in this sense. I want to tell you that the more you know Jesus, the more committed you ought to be to him. See, as you go through this life, you got to understand this. You got to know clearly that the more you know about Jesus, the more committed you got to be to him. Because to believe in Jesus means to put your trust in him. Have you put your trust fully in Jesus during this crisis? Or is your faith in your employer? Have you put your faith truly in Jesus? Or is your faith in your business's success? To believe means to put your trust in. Have you put your trust fully in Jesus during this crisis? Or is your faith in your employer? Have you put your faith truly in Jesus? Or is your faith in your business's success? Have you put your trust fully in Jesus during this crisis? Or is your faith in your educational accomplishments? Where is your faith when everything gets stripped away from you. See, that's why sometimes we're called to believe even when we don't know. See, this word for belief is the same word used for faith in the New Testament. So I'll ask you this question. Are you able to put your trust in Jesus when you can't put your trust in anything else? See, you can if you understand belief in the last sense that it's presented here uh, in this passage. To believe 
means to be persuaded of. See, there are some times in your walk with Jesus when you just have to be persuaded. And, and make no mistake about it, people of God, this is one of those times. See, Paul gives us some clear language for this in Romans chapter 8, verse 38 through 39. He says, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor present nor things to come nor angels nor rulers or nor height nor depth nor, or, nor things created or things above will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Why is that possible, you ask? It's possible because God is love. See, when we talk about God being love, it, it's, John's letting us know that God is the fullest expression of what love is. He's not saying that God is somehow some form of love. No, what he's actually saying is this. He's saying that God himself is love. What is love, you ask? Love is affection. God is the fullest expression of affection. It says that God is, that, that love, it refers to goodwill and benevolence. So God is the fullest expression of goodwill and benevolence. The word for love, it, it refers to charity. So God is the fullest expression of of charity in our lives. And so I want you to understand this idea. He says here in, in verse 16, he goes on to say, he says, God is love, and the one who remains in love remains in God, and God remains in him. See, if we are to truly love, if we're going to prove it, if we're going to prove our love and have a proven love, then we must remain in God's love. See, to remain means that we abide in his affection. To remain means that we continue in charity towards one another, even during this time of social distancing. See, we must dwell in goodwill toward one another, even when there isn't enough Purell to go around. We, we must endure in benevolence towards one another, even when the world is screaming out, protect yourself. See, John lets us know, he's telling us in this passage, he's saying that in this, love is made perfect. And in this, love is made perfect. What John is insinuating here, he's insinuating that when we endure in showing love, we add what is yet wanting in the world in order to render love as perfect. See, the world is awaiting the church to arise and show what love truly is. See, the world is waiting on the church to arise and show forth the love of Jesus that we talk about. See, and we have a perfect opportunity to do that right now in the midst of this crisis. See, in our service of others during this time, love is made complete in us, which, as John tells us, he says that produces a confidence within us. And so that's the next idea I want to submit to you is this, is that love produces confidence. Verse 17, he says this, he says, In this love is made complete with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. See, this confidence means that we can be free and fearless even in the midst of crisis when we love others. This means that we can be bold in the midst of the coronavirus when we love and serve others. This means that we can have an assurance in the midst of crisis when we remain in God who is love. But this last portion of this word, I love this, this, this understanding of this word here. It means that we get to have cheerful courage in the midst of COVID-19 when we endure in God's love. 
So in full, what John is saying is this. He's saying that we can have confidence in the day of judgment that we have the love of God on the inside of us if we would simply love others. See, this day of judgment used to spark fear in the hearts of people. And I don't know if that's true anymore. However, when we look at John's language here, we see the Greek word for judgment is where we get the English word crisis from. So John is telling us in the day of crisis, we can have confidence or cheerful courage because even as he, God, is, so also are we in the world. So in other words, as we say all the time around here, you're never more like Jesus than when you're serving and loving others. So, so here's what you can count on. When you are truly loving people, you have nothing to fear because there is no fear in love. That leads me to this next point I want you to understand is that love reduces fear. Verse 18, he says, there's no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives out fear because fear involves punishment. The word for fear here is, is where we get the word phobia from. And so the world is filled with fright right now as we speak. As I'm speaking to you right now, the world is filled with alarm and terror. But John tells us this. He tells us that perfect love drives out fear. See, the phrase for drive out means that it means to give over to one's care even when you're uncertain about the results. So perfect love causes us to give over our fear and anxiety to God's care even though we're uncertain about the results. See, we've got to give it over to Jesus. I want to encourage you today in the midst of COVID-19, in the midst of the novel coronavirus, in the midst of being isolated and quarantined, in the midst of social distancing, in the midst of fear and anxiety about what's to come, people being laid off from their jobs and people not having hours on their jobs and all these types of stimuluses, packages and all that kind of stuff. In the midst of all of this, you got to know that perfect love drives out fear. See, John says this. He says that fear is, a, is about punishment. And the uncertainty of life causes us to believe that circumstances in our life are the direct result of God's punishment for our sins. I can't tell you how many people have come to me and said, Pastor Derek, this is God's punishment. Well, listen. The reality of all of this is not that this is God's punishment because the gospel tells us that the full weight and breadth of the penalty for sin in our lives was laid upon Jesus on the cross if we are believers in Christ. So here's what you need to know. God doesn't punish his children. He only chastens them. See, the one who fears is not complete in love. And we've got to understand this very clearly, that God, he chases after those who he loves. And so we don't have to fear whether this is punishment for sins. We don't have to fear any of that. All we have to rest in and know is that God will chase after his people to pursue them, to bring them into relationship with him more deeply at whatever cost that might take. But we don't have to fear when we walk in love because his chastening of us, his chastisement is for our good. But here's the reality, and John lays this out so beautifully for us. In verse 19, he tells us, he says, listen, no matter what, no matter what you might think, no matter what the circumstance is, he tells us that we are to love God because he first loved us. See, we love because he first loved us. That leads us to this next idea that I want you to understand very clearly 
is that love is responsive. See, we don't love, hear me, we don't love out of faith, we love out of first. See, in time, he was first to love us. See, in rank of importance, he was first to love us. In the succession of time, Jesus was first to love us. And so because of that, he calls us to this reality. He says this. He says, love others because I first loved you. And that leads me to my final idea here is that love is relational. In verse 20, you see this. He says that if anyone says, I love God, and yet he hates his brother or sister, he is a liar. For this person who does not love his brother or sister, whom he has seen, they cannot love God, whom they have not seen. See, many of us are running around right now concerned about contact with other people. We're running around concerned about running into people and people spreading the virus to us. And I'm not telling you not to take precautions, but what I am calling the people of God to is that this is our moment. This is our moment to step in the gap and serve as Jesus served. Jesus didn't shy away from having interaction with people that his culture and religion would have deemed as unclean. See, Jesus didn't shy away from interacting with people who were able to infect him with the disease of leprosy. He didn't shy away from them. Jesus also wasn't reckless, but he didn't shy away from them. He sought to serve them in every way possible that he was able to serve them. And so, yeah, I hear you saying right now, Pastor Derek, well, we're not Jesus and we can't heal them. But the reality is, is that the prayer of the righteous produces much. And so if you are running around scared and nervous about having interaction with people, I want to call you to repentance. I want to call you to leading a lifestyle of worship. I want to call you to living woven. Take every precaution that you can not to spread this virus, but don't allow that to cause you to turn up your nose at people who are in need of help. God's calling us to that in this season. He's calling us to love others as he loved us. He's calling us not to turn our back on our brother and sister in need. And he's calling us to live woven and leverage our work for others. And so Epiphany Church and all of you watching online, we're just encouraged today to call you to have a proven love. And at times in life, having a proven love sometimes means that you put yourself in uncomfortable situations. Sometimes that means that you place yourself in situations that may not be best for you, but it serves other people. And so we want you to take every precaution possible. Hear me very clearly about that. We want you to take every precaution possible but we want you to run to serving others so that you could serve God. And I want you to know this, that Jesus didn't waste one ounce, not one second of his time fooling around trying to avoid people. Jesus spent all of his time on a mission to serve others and to love others as best as he was able to. And so we're called to the same thing, people. We're called to the same kind of thing. And Jesus is calling us to love on those who are in need during this time. So here is how you can do that. We want you to reach out to somebody that you know is in need of assistance. We want you to sit. You've got time. <laughs> Most of you got more time than you would like to have.
but you've got time to sit and consider how you could serve other people. And so we want you to really take assessment about how you can do that. We want you to really consider how it is you can love on your brother and sister during this time. And know that in your serving of them, you're serving Jesus. Jesus says, what you've done for the least of these, you've done for me. And so we want to encourage you in this season. We want to encourage you during this time to serve the least, the last, the lost, and the left out. And know that in doing that, you're serving God. And so maybe you're listening today and you've been struck by fear. Maybe you're listening this morning and you've been challenged by the difficulties of life. Maybe you're listening right now and you just don't know how all this is going to shake out. We want to encourage you as the people of God to know this fact very clearly, that Jesus has won the victory for you. And so you may not know what's getting ready to happen. You may not know what's about to take place. But as all the believers in the room, all the believers who are watching online can tell you that we serve a God who loves and cares for his people. And as David said, I once was young, but now I'm old. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken. So if you're watching right now, and you want to give your life to Jesus, we want to pray for you right now. If you're watching right now and you're saying, I just don't know what to do right now in this season. Everything seems crazy. Everything seems out of whack. And maybe you're just feeling like the situation feels out of control. Maybe you're watching online and you haven't had the opportunity to Walk with the Savior that we're talking to you about. Maybe you're watching online and you don't understand how it is that people can have hope in the midst of this crisis. Well, we want to tell you about a Savior who came and died in your place for your sins. Because we were all sinners in need of the grace of God. We were all sinners who violated the laws of God. And because of his holiness, because of the holiness of God, we were not able to have fellowship with him because of our sin. So Jesus sent his son into the world, his perfect son, his only son, who never committed any sin. He sent his son into the world to die in our places. And not only that, not only did he die, but after three days, he got up from the grave and he rose again. And so if you're listening today and and, and you want to make a decision for Jesus, we ask that you would just comment right there online. We ask that you would comment and say, my life has been changed by Jesus today. If you're watching and doing that, we'll follow up with you immediately. We'll walk you through what it means to have a life-giving relationship with Jesus Christ where you can live with him and love his word and live woven with other believers and lead a lifestyle of worship and leverage your work to make a difference in the world. And so we want to pray for you right now, if that's you. And we want to pray that God would speak to you clearly and that he would guide you over the next days and weeks as you're navigating throughout this coronavirus pandemic, which we believe that God is in control of and he's ruling over. It's not overruling him. He's overruling it. So we want to pray for you right now. And we're asking everybody who's watching this, if you're a believer, pray with me as we pray for those who don't yet know Jesus. Father, I pray right now, God, that you would show up in the hearts of those who don't know you. God, I pray, God, that your glory would be on display right now, Father. God, I pray, God, that you would show up in their lives, God, and show them yourself resurrected. God, help them to meet the resurrected Savior today. God, help them to repent of their sins. Help them to cry out to you today. Help them to call on your name for salvation. And so, Father, we pray, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would save 
that you would deliver, that you would restore. God, in the midst of this crisis, we know that people are hurting, people are struggling, and people are doubting. But God, there is only one answer to whatever it is that ails us, and that is Jesus Christ, the Lord. And so, Father, we pray right now, God, show up in our lives, transform, renew, deliver us, God, and we'll forever give you praise. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you so much for joining us today and for watching online. We want to continue to invite you to check in with us, follow on our social media pages, watch out for our email list. If, if you're not on that, you can send an email to info at epiphanywilmington.org, and we'll follow up with you very quickly. Grace and peace to you.